Hey everybody, welcome to Vitavik Arts. I'm Josh, and today we are working on some more... Space Marines? I'm just gonna call them Space Marines. Now these aren't my variant versions, these are just straight up as close as I could get to the actual models. So, um, yeah, I'm not really trying to hide it here. This is a Rhino, but I want to go into this Rhino and uh, change it a little. So here, here it is, if you're interested in seeing what it looks like. Now, I'm gonna work on this in the video, but I want to talk about why I actually made this model. Because uh, it's just a Rhino, and um, you can get this model on Thingiverse already. Now, I wanted to customize a Rhino and make it my own little design or variant version of a Rhino and make it more of a, uh, like the Halo-esque kind of Star Wars style of um, model, which is what I talked about in my previous video. And I didn't really want to go and take someone else's work and just modify it. There's nothing wrong with doing that kind of stuff. I love it when you guys do that to my work. So uh, don't don't let me deter you from doing that. I think it's really awesome. But for this model, I, I just wanted to have my own uh, model to actually work from. So I went and made the Rhino just to uh, convert for a, another video. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty damn awesome. So let's have a look at how this was made. Now I did all the modeling over on Maya, and I started from complete scratch. There is one thing that I used that I have previously made, and that was the tracks. Now the reason I did this was because uh, tracks are, <laughs> they're really annoying to make. They, they just take a long time, and they're about precise positioning. And uh, I could have made tracks from scratch again, but I wanted to get this out as fast as possible. And the entire model took around about an hour and a half to two hours to model. So it wasn't that long, but it would have taken a lot longer if I had to make the tracks from scratch. So I actually have a, an, an official model of this here, Rhino. So it was actually really good to reference as I was working along. Um, I was really stupid and I started this model without any reference. I was just looking at a picture online, so I didn't have a physical model to look at. And um, I ended up going into my bin of <laughs> uncomplete Warhammer and uh, I pulled out um, a, this Rhino that, uh, that is not finished still. But um, it helped me a lot to understand a little bit more of the dimensions and how things looked properly. So working on these tracks, I'm not really sure, they're, they're like track armor. Uh, I did my best, but this was before I had that model to reference from, which is really silly. I probably should go back and change it, but in all honesty, I really like the way it turned out in the end. Now one of the most important things about these models, my tanks in particular, is I like to make them printable without any supports. So these exhaust pipes were a bit of a tricky issue. I, I started making them uh, without any intention to have any um, supportless build. And then I came back to them and I built little struts that are permanently on the model. And um, you'll be able to see them later on. I hope that people don't mind them. I think they kind of make the model look a tiny bit unique. Um, they definitely separate it from the normal Games Workshop variants. So. Uh, hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. Now when it came time to the body, I really didn't know what I was doing exactly. I was looking at the pictures online and I did my best to do uh, what I could with the little hatches on the top. Um, I, I didn't really know what I was doing though and I screwed up the model a lot. I really should have had separate things instead of cutting into the model. Um, I ended up coming back and raising a little bit and the whole model just imploded. And I, I don't even know what happened really, but um, there I, I should have taken my time on it. Um, but you know, you learn from your mistakes. But yeah, it came out in the end. It just added extra time to work, which I really, 
I really should have uh, should have prepared for ahead of time. Now the roof hatch, or those little doors, normally you can just take them off with the Games Workshop variants, but this is in, it's in there. So when you print this, it's, you can't remove it. Same with the back door, that can't open or anything. So hopefully you guys are okay with that. I'm saying a lot of hopefully, and I say that because I don't want people to want to make um, Games Workshop models here and look at this and be like, oh, this is, this isn't an exact replica of, uh, of the 40k uh, Rhino and people get upset and I understand why people can get upset about that. I'm, I am saying this is a Rhino but it's, it is my own kind of interpretation slash uh, laziness and um, I'm, I'm trying to do my best with what I can. Now I started the tracks here and I, I kind of just gave up on them. I did not like the look of them. And I have the model now to reference, and I'm kind of glad that I did give up and uh, use a different set of tracks because I was making them completely wrong and they looked horrible. Um, and yeah, I think the tracks were probably the most difficult part of this model just because I wanted to have this print in one go. So I've used tracks from the previous tanks that I've made and I've kind of customized them a little bit. You can't really tell that they're the tracks from World War II tanks and stuff. Um, they're completely covered by armor and uh, it's just, you can see the treads on the bottom and a couple of the wheels that are in the um, arches, like in this little section here. Like you can't really see what's going on there. So I came back and um, I put those in there and I customized it quite a lot and I made sure that it was flat and then it would print and it was really, really painful to do if I'm honest. Pretty much because uh, that edge, that edge is just a real pain to match up with, especially with tracks because realistically you're supposed to have a clear line of sight. If I show you this model here, this is an actual rhino that's incomplete. You can see you can see straight through there on both sides. Um, to do that with a printer would be really complicated, and um, it would just take a little bit more time than I'd like to put into this. Now this is way more detailed than my model. You can see here the tracks are. You can see straight through them. It's just awesome. Whereas my one is, they are thick and flat. That's because that's the bottom of where the printer sits. So this actually prints that part like like this. And um, that is better to be completely flat as opposed to have a whole bunch of gaps. Just because some of you guys, I notice um, you don't have the best printers. And this is the best way to make your print as easy as possible all across the board. Um, if you have a really good printer, uh, you might be able to ask someone to customize this. There is just a plate in there. You should be able to delete and it will be hollow, but you will 100% need supports to print it. And um, I honestly don't recommend it just because I think it looks fine like this. You rarely see in between here and you rarely get that low to be able to see through that gap anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Going back to how the model was made, I, like I said, really screwed up with those hatches. It, it really broke the entire thing, and for some reason, I, I really goofed up, honestly. I kept cutting into the model instead of adding extra parts, and uh, doing that, it, it just ends up being more complex, like a more complex geometry than it needs to be. And um, yeah, I, I regret doing that, but in the end, I got through and got it done. But like that back door, that back door is unnecessarily attached to the uh, the tank. So I had to go back and change it when I wanted to uh, change the, when it, when it screwed up, I had to go back and change it. You can see right here exactly what I'm talking about. Now I was, all I was trying to do was raise the, uh, raise around the hatch to make it look like it was a little bit thicker metal and it was just a pain it was just unnecessary don't follow the way I made this model when it comes to those hatches definitely use separate models and you know don't don't make the geometry crazy um, like I do <laughs> 
Now, I came back to the track armor, and I this is when I was actually referencing my actual model, and I noticed that things were a lot more different to the official model. Um, I basically have to say that this is a variant uh, on its own to the GW model. Now, as I was making this model, I already had an idea of what I want to do when I come back to it and do the variant. Um, I am going to have to change it up quite a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure... Considering this tank is a transport, or like a... a, a it's a troop transport vehicle, and it's got that back door that opens up and that roof, and I know the variation of the Predator tank, you just replace that top and it has a turret. I, I want to keep most of the stuff that's going on with the Rhino, but it can't really be a troop transport if I want it to be the tank that I want it to be. Which, I may as well just show you right here, here's a little drawing I did, and um, yeah, we're pretty much looking at a Scorpion variant. Um, I I don't know how this is going to work when I, when I come back into it, I'm going to have to have additional parts to attach. Kind of like the Stug that I made here, it's how it's got these plates that go across. I'm probably going to have to do that uh, with this tank so when these parts are gone, um, I'll have to have some sort of armor plating over the top and then I'll use uh, four separate tracks that attach to it. Now I haven't made it yet, um, I'm really looking forward to making it. It's going to be completely... Um, pretty, it's going to be pretty cool, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm really looking forward to it, so hopefully you guys are too. Now when it came time to painting this tank here, I really didn't have a scheme in mind. I've already painted some models in the past, some Space Marines, and they've got a kind of like a red and gold look. They, It's hard to tell if I was going for a Blood Raven or Blood Angels look. I didn't really want to do any. Uh, I kind of wanted to do my own thing, but I realized that uh, I've kind of been going to this red and white look. Now my orcs are almost the exact same scheme as this. All I have to do is paint some checkers on here and slap some um, orc banners and this is this would be an orc tank <laughs> really easily. So you could easily convert this if you wanted to. But as I started looking into some paint schemes and, uh, and, and started actually painting it, I kind of had this ideology and this is probably where they want you to be thinking. Um, these guys are, or Space Marines in particular, are futuristic knights, and I know there's a lot of terminology in 40k Warhammer that it doesn't hide that secret. They are knights, and I think one of the most coolest, I say coolest as in they look the coolest, not what they did, but I think some of the coolest knights back in the day were the Crusaders, and I know that uh, you got the Black Templars, and they are almost entirely uh, taken inspiration from Crusaders from that era. Now, I kind of thought, I hey, might as well make this my own variant of Crusaders, as in the medieval Crusaders. And I immediately fell in love with that idea, and the idea that, you know, they're very religious um, characters, Space Marines and the Imperium. And uh, I think... I think I got into the headspace of Space Marines right there and then. Um, I, I don't know what it was. I just I started thinking of like Crusaders and what Crusaders did, and I could easily see a, a force like an overwhelming force of Space Marines being Crusaders. Now I have I don't keep this a secret at all. I'm not a huge fan of Space Marines, but in that headspace, I understand it. I think. I think I finally like Space Marines for who they actually are, which is really awesome. I'm, I'm kind of excited now to make more of these models. <laughs> but I'm still going to be making the variants, and uh, I hope you guys look forward to those as well. Now, uh, I'm going to announce a couple models that I have in my head right now. So if you've been watching this far, this is a little bit of a heads up for you guys and something to look forward to. We have obviously got this tank right here. Now, a variant of that would be a Predator, which isn't too much work on top of this. It's just turrets and some side turrets, which will be really cool, um, and that'll be that. Now, when it comes to Marines, we've got these guys right here. I think some Assault Marines would be really, really cool. Uh, one of the variations with that is just a jump pack and some uh, close quarters weapons. 
I love those assault marines. I think they're probably my favorite looking ones, especially with the the, the helmet that goes like the pointy helmet. I always call that a beak helmet just because it looks like a bird. Uh, I think they're really cool. So we'll definitely have some jump pack dudes later. Uh, one of the biggest models that I really want to announce is a Titan. Uh, I'm not sure which kind of Titan I'm going to go for. Probably one of the smaller ones to begin with. But I'm really excited to work on something like that. Um, I haven't worked on a really big model like that in a while. And I thought I would just tell you guys that's something that I want to do. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you guys are too. There's a lot of hope in this video. So... I hope you guys do like where I'm going with this and uh, expect the variations to be coming soon and um, yeah, I may as well show you right now where the variation is. You can't really see this very well on this camera. This is the Space Marines that are more tactical. Um, they, they are, it's very hard to see. You will see them once they're painted in one of the next videos. Uh, I'm really happy with the way they look. They are taking inspiration from the Halo Spartans. So if you're a fan of that, hopefully you'll enjoy these guys when they come out. Uh, other than that, I have to say a massive thank you to my patrons over on Patreon for making this here video possible. You guys are absolutely awesome. I love your support and I love your like like postage that you you post me like I see you guys are actually making these models and um, you're enjoying them so that is just awesome now if you do make any of these models be sure to post them over on Thingiverse Thingiverse has been a bit buggy recently but the makes are still working so you can post a make over there and I'll be able to see it otherwise you can post it over on uh, Instagram using the hashtag VidivicArts I love seeing that stuff, so keep posting it. Otherwise, if you want to support me further on these videos, you can head over to Patreon and pledge a couple dollars per video or per month. Completely up to you. And you'll get your hands on some extra models here and there. Most of them are D&D models at the moment, but I will have 40k models coming out every so often. Yeah, you'll have access to all of the models over there just by pledging a couple dollars, so you may as well check it out. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay awesome. See you guys.